Hello! And action! I'm Iris. Hi, I'm V. We are back again. We actually have snacks this time. Specially made chocolate cupcakes. And she loves them. She doesn't have one. No, because I ate all of my allowance. She I ate two. I have amazing yogurt, guys. It's <laughs> so exciting. The bowl is actually the focus of attention here because it's so pretty in Japanese. Anyway, let's get to it. Nostalgia for the Light, which is a Chilean movie directed by Patricio Guzman. Guzman. And it, it was released in 2011. Okay, so the film is basically a, it's a documentary, it's often been called an essay film, and it is a film um, that is quite political, it is at its core about Chilean, recent Chilean history and the dictatorship that occurred um, in the 70s following the socialist uh, leader. Um, Ayede, I think it was, mm -hmm. Biede, I forgot his name. And the film basically explores parallels between this metaphor that the filmmaker makes um, between the blossoming, the blossoming field of astronomy in Chile, in northern Chile, uh, in the Atacama Desert, and between... Search for the people who disappeared during the dictatorship. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's connecting scientists with like normal Chilean people and it's connecting people who were who are young and people who are old like people who were born in exile and people who were actually born in Chile and went through the whole mm. process that yeah. they were talking about. And it's kind of documenting their relationship to what happened in the seventies and their kind of the way that they're coping with the idea of memory and loss. So <laughs> we're starting off with the best question to start off with. Did we like it? Iris, did you like it? Yes, I loved it. I didn't know what to expect. I not. I literally did not know which movie we were going to watch when I walked in, so... But it was amazing, yeah. I share that sentiment very strongly. <laughs> I fell in love with the movie. I think it was absolutely terrific. This film, like, literally ticked all my boxes. All my boxes are ticked, so... Okay, we've both taken a sip. So, themes. Well, I think the most important <clears throat> theme to talk about is memory and nostalgia. Because the it's literally in the title, Nostalgia for the Light. Yeah. So Check it out. It was really hard for us to crack the code. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't actually see. I tried thing. so hard to be pro a professional YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> so, nostalgia is probably one of the main concerns of the movie. Because it looks back at... Uh, Chile's past and uh, what the people are thinking about the past but also trying to forget about it. What I really loved about the film was that its structure kind of pivoted around these specific um, people that were interviewed by um... Patricio. Why do I always forget his name? There is a specific uh, couple that um, Guzman focuses on as a kind of metaphor for what he thinks uh, Chile is experiencing. This architect uh, who um, is a symbol in the film kind of of the memorization that is encapsulated by Guzman himself. And then there is his wife who is suffering from Alzheimer's and therefore a uh, symbol of forgetting Chile's past. So there's this kind of dual thing happening. And what was absolutely, like one of my favorite moments in the film, this man uh, was talking about when he was held in a concentration camp and the way that he documented and memorized the area was by uh, literally walking and using his legs to measure the steps that he took and what he would do every night is he would sit down and draw um, the uh, to scale drawing of the actual concentration camp to show what it was like living there and he would tear up his drawings at the end of the night and in the morning he'd be the first one up and he would go and flush flush those uh, remains down the latrine so that he would not be caught and everything can you imagine how many drawings you had to do everything stayed in his memory that is just unbelievable I just thought my god 
What an amazing man. Um, I really like the interview with one of the women, mm. which really like, oh my god, that was... <laughs> She was talking about how she wished that the telescopes that were built in the desert in Chile that those would be able to be used to look into the ground instead of up so that they could look for basically the remains and the past that has no, basically disappeared and that nobody actually wants to talk about anymore so she really wants to try and find that again so to me that that was the moment that the movie became one of the most amazing documentaries I've ever seen and also the moment where um, this uh, young uh, younger woman and how she talked about the fact that yeah. al although her parents might not be around anymore her child because she's a mother of two will never have that problem and that the fact that th there is now a de democracy in Chile <laughs> which to me was just like this amazing moment which once again hammered home that there is a lot of history in Chile and not many people realize that or at least in the West we don't really look at it that way can I just say like I had no idea that this happened no I knew nothing about it and yet I was able to I felt the like the pulse of this this woman that you were talking about mm. she was on screen he's got this uh, way of filming all this mother was doing was just holding her baby that's all she was doing and I just felt like breaking down and crying I, I think that also worked very well because intercutting with that you had the images of her grandparents the old life and the people who who have actually seen the whole thing play out and were part of of that history like that is also a thing that the movie talks about about uh, past present and future and how they are connected mostly past and present and one of the things that was said by one of the astronomers is that there's no such thing as the present which Technically is true because everything you see and everything you perceive is delayed by a few milliseconds So there is no such thing as the present. You're always looking into, into the past Yeah, and he mentioned as well like that the present was very much something that exists psychologically that we cr construct in our minds um, and that the past is very much an anchor for us it's a, like important stress on you've got to live in the now and then he's what this director is doing is looking at well, what does that mean he he discusses well he doesn't i think he discusses i don't know because there is a voiceover that the calcium found in stars is the very calcium that's in your bones and he makes this in, these these links between what is out there and what is the beginning of everything is also you another quote that stood out was the one that went on about poking wounds and like yeah. if a, if something is bleeding you can touch it but you need to be aware that if it's still bleeding and you're touching it it might get infected which is basically he's using it as a metaphor for the past of Chile because it's still so close for so many people that they are not yet seeing it as history but um, and more as memory and because memory is a difficult thing sometimes to talk about that they are trying to still ignore it uh, so we should probably talk about the fact that um, uh, Patricio is a political filmmaker and his other films that we were shown excerpts of today are films surprise surprise that deal with Chile's historical and political sorry political past the past is already historical even in his battle of chile footage that we saw he was basically doing interviews with people so he interviewed people from the socialist side and people who weren't from the socialist side and he originally wanted to make it about the national party because there was an election going to happen and then suddenly six months later the whole country was a dictatorship where we can now look at those movies as history during the time that he was making them they were present so he's more focusing on the fact that people have a choice than on the choice they are making the films that we've been watching recently in general 
are in that sense less political because they're exploring people's reactions rather than advocating a certain right and wrong. And the films that we watch, like Après Mai, for example, or Something in the Air, to me didn't feel very political as much as like you're watching a, basically a bunch of kids trying to figure out what the heck they think. And that's something that everyone can recognize because we're all trying to figure out what the heck we think. I like that movie, but I was also like, they are achieving so much more than we are achieving. So the introduction into the movie is mostly stars and a view of the stars and a view of a, a telescope oh, yeah. the beautiful turning telescopes. and um, a roof opening. He decides to use the astronomy as a metaphor. The metaphors in this were quite explicit, I think. It's quite yes. easy to understand. And it's a film that has a very clear structure to it, which is what um, ties it into being an essay film. Um, but what is interesting to me about this metaphor of astronomy is that... I wrote this in my notes. Hang on, let me know. <laughs> like a contradiction. What did I write? Yeah. A contradiction <laughs> for Chile. And these very things that kind of make it possible to see into history are contradicted with this kind of um, reversal that Chile is having of, you know, forgetting its recent past. And that it's right there. It's like right there. There are very few people who are actually looking. Yeah. That is one of the problems that uh, that is uh, also central to the movie is the fact that there are things in that desert that should be found but nobody's looking or there are very few people looking. In this case specifically they're trying to find family members who've disappeared. Use that essay film. An essay film is is not as objective or uh, seemingly not as objective as many other documentaries and that uh, that makes it for a very interesting study and the essay film and essay videos are slowly getting more and more popular there are a lot of youtube channels who do them every frame a picture which oh. is an essay it's a very cool channel Ooh, anyway I, i'll put a link in in the video here somewhere here <laughs> anyway an essay yes. for me is has got a clear beginning, middle and end, and the essay usually goes through a series of points in order to um, express what it is that it's trying to say. And in this sense, um, what the director is doing is he is presenting his metaphors as a way of expressing his idea about the way that Chile as a culture is dealing with its past. Yeah, for me this movie felt like an essay film because the first few shots really felt like an introduction. Even though he goes into a different argument, he constantly comes back to the astronomy. Mm. Felt very much like what you do in an essay, and that at the end of your um, of your paragraph, you sort of summarize what's going on. I agree with you, and I think that the way that he did that was he punctuated visually, and there would yes. be this moments. It wasn't a constant voiceover. Oh, there no, would there would be not. moments of it, very important moments of pause where you've just received information and you take it in and then you move on and you see an interview or something else and then you take that in and you have a pause. So the punctuation is purely visual due to the calm that was in the movies. You had some time to breathe, which I feel like regular movies rarely do unless you go to like the more indie movies. Is there anything else we want to add? I do have one thing I didn't like. Uh, it was more of a discomfort rather than dislike, but it was the shakiness of the camera. And that's the very first time camera shakiness has affected me. Okay, because you have watched the Bourne films. I have watched the Bourne films. I, I have hate no it. problem with them. I hate it. No problem with them. In Rain this spray. movie, I had absolutely no problem with it. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I had a problem because he was, like, the entire frame was moving. And it was like this. So, to conclude. <laughs> we both enjoyed this movie a lot and we now have more knowledge about Chilean history than we ever did before. This film is a very good example of what an essay film can do. These people deserve money for what they did. So, go buy it. Go see the freaking film! She says go see the freaking film, I see. See you later.
Claro que sí, ¿por qué no? Pantalones. <laughs> Pants? Yeah. Really? I know. It's a memorable word, pantalones. <laughs>